Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about our mysterious neighbor, Venus. The planet with extremely high temperatures close to about 500 degrees Celsius and extremely high pressures of about 93 atmospheres on the surface. The planet on which we might have potentially discovered phosphine, which I've discussed in one of the previous videos, but the discovery of which is still not entirely certain. The beautiful planet that sort of hinted on the existence of potential bacterial life in its upper atmosphere, with the recent discovery or potential discovery of phosphine being that one sign that a lot of scientists want to investigate. And because of these unconfirmed discoveries, for several months now there have been a lot of speculations about a potential future mission to Venus of some sort of really unusual and very innovative rover that's never been made before. A rover that's pretty much entirely mechanical because that's the only way that such a rover could survive on the surface. And we've learned about the extreme conditions on the Venus the hard way. And specifically during the highest peak of space exploration for the Soviet Union during the early 80s, the Soviets sent several probes here that ended up landing, taking a few photos, but pretty much all of them became entirely disabled within only a couple of hours. All of which was of course the result of absolutely extreme conditions of the Venusian atmosphere. But this of course has not stopped the scientists, and for roughly a couple of decades now, various ideas have been proposed to try to explore this beautiful planet. But what makes the last few years and especially the last few months very exciting is the actual realization of several of these ideas and several of these propositions. First of all, a few months ago, NASA held a successful competition of various designs where it essentially offered people a few thousand dollars if they could successfully design a mechanical rover that could operate and sense its environment by using no electrical components whatsoever. This one right here being the number one winner. And you can learn more about this in one of the previous videos somewhere right there. And this of course allowed NASA to now sort of start planning this mission for real. We have the mechanical parts worked out, we have the potential idea for a rover that could land on Venus and possibly function here for a few months or even a few years. And now NASA has to figure out the last part. The part where it still needs to find a way to communicate with the rover. Because you cannot really communicate with this with mechanical parts alone. We still need to have some sort of electrical thing going on on the inside in order to create the electromagnetic waves for various radio transmissions. If you have a functioning rover on the surface but you have no idea what it's doing, the mission becomes kind of pointless. And so to add something to these designs, a lot of NASA scientists have recently been working on essentially creating a radio that can function in these conditions. And for the past few years, NASA has been running this really cool program known as GEAR, or G-E-E-R, which stands for Glen Extreme Environment Rig. This device is able to create conditions very similar to the conditions on the surface of Venus, and by placing various materials and various components inside this device, NASA scientists have been actually testing what survives and what doesn't. Not surprisingly, of course, a lot of modern materials we use in electronics do not survive for a very long time. They basically become completely useless within only a few minutes. And for silicon-based semiconductors like this one, they generally lose the ability to function as semiconductors really quickly as well. So for example, for a typical MOSFET, a semiconductor that's used in a lot of different components, if we use silicon here, it essentially becomes a permanent on switch once it reaches temperatures of about 300 degrees or even lower than that. And so on Venus, where temperatures are even higher, no electronics from Earth would function at all. And so radios that we have would not work here naturally. But because of these challenges and because of the requirement to have a radio for a rover, in the last few years this has sort of been creating a completely new industry. An industry based on a new type of a semiconductor known as silicon carbide. And it looks like a lot of scientists using these silicon carbide components to create various types of electronics have been getting closer and closer to creating this radio for a Venusian rover. Now, to have a successful rover obviously has to be able to move around, it has to be able to explore, it has to be able to produce its own energy, which has already been sort of achieved using these mechanical rovers. And so it's really the communication part that's sort of the last missing component. And it looks like silicon carbide so far is the best solution to solve this problem. Now, silicon carbides are not new. They actually have been produced in large quantities back in 1890s, over 130 years ago. And it was Edward Akeson that accidentally produced a lot of them when he was actually trying to create artificial diamonds. But by combining silicon and carbon, instead he ended up producing silicon carbides. 
And interestingly enough, the first semiconductors produced back in 1906 were made from silicon carpets as well. But because silicon was much more efficient and also easier to produce, eventually it took over and the semiconductor industry of today is entirely based on silicons and not on silicon carbides. And one of the reasons why silicon carbides are not very popular is because the crystals from which all of this is made are extremely difficult to produce. And it wasn't really until the late 90s when we finally learned how to make these silicon carbides crystals much easier. And even though this material has already been used in various other industries, it's not really that widely used in electronics yet. But it does make an excellent semiconductor. A semiconductor that has been shown to be able to survive extreme conditions, such as the ones on Venus. So unlike silicon semiconductors, silicon carbides can actually withstand temperatures up to about 1000 degrees Celsius, which would obviously allow these types of electronics to easily function on the surface of Venus. Now because of this, for the past few years, NASA has been officially testing various types of electronics made from silicon carbides in this particular device that I previously showed you. And in one of the recent tests, it was able to survive in there for over a year. And that is actually really impressive. Especially because several other teams have already started working on integrated circuits. Circuits made from this particular material. With one of the more impressive ones I found so far, about which you can learn in the article below, being this one right here, known as Vulcan 2. And these integrated circuits are kind of reminiscent of some of the early days of modern electronics. Specifically, when the original MOSFET was invented back in 1950s, following this, there was a huge explosion of various electronics, of various electronic devices, that pretty much kickstarted the modern electronic era. All of which was kickstarted by these two wonderful people back in 1959. And then in the 60s, that's when the entire semiconductor industry just exploded. That's basically when Intel was found, that's when the Silicon Valley became a thing, and then you kind of probably know the rest. But that is exactly where we find ourselves right now with the silicon carbide semiconductors as well. The creation of these first integrated circuits using silicon carbides has a really high chance of exploding this new industry in the next few years. But not just because it will allow us to go to Venus. Venus is just sort of the requirement and the precursor. This industry has a lot of applications here on Earth as well. With some potential applications being extreme conditions in, for example, various turbines, various deep oil wells, all sorts of high temperature and high pressure conditions, such as in various types of engines, or in various types of production facilities where there is a lot of pressure and temperature involved as well. It will essentially allow us to create various types of circuits and various types of electronics that can function in some absolutely extreme conditions where nothing was possible before. And according to the scientists behind this paper, they've already been able to create approximately 40 different integrated circuit devices that do function in these conditions. So essentially, it's the start of something absolutely incredible, assuming of course we do end up going to Venus, testing these devices there, and then take this to a next level here on planet Earth. Which of course should not really come as a surprise. A lot of modern inventions that we're using today, including things like MRI machines, things like Wi-Fi, all of these inventions originally started as something from astronomy or space exploration. And so because the scientists require these machines to function in these extreme conditions, it can definitely lead to a completely new technology and a completely new industry here on planet Earth as well. But even though these devices sound amazing and even though we kind of are getting closer to being able to make them, with the idea of radio itself that can function on Venus being maybe about a year away, these particular semiconductors are still not perfect. For example, even a low voltage device still requires a lot more voltage than a typical silicon semiconductor, with the minimal required voltage being about 15 volts. And that's because of the nature of the silicon carbide itself. You can learn more about the details in the article in the description. At the same time, today we normally use what's known as PCB, or printed circuit board like the one you see right here, in order to create a platform for a lot of these integrated circuits to communicate and to function. But unfortunately for the radio on Venus and for a lot of these silicate carbide uh, semiconductors, the production is entirely different. The chips in this case have to be attached to this really hard board using various gold and silver components and previous components like aluminium no longer work. A lot of the board also has to be covered in titanium and even more silver and copper that's normally used in modern boards no longer works either. And pretty much the entire board becomes a mixture of titanium, silver and gold. 
In other words, it's extremely expensive and also pretty challenging to produce using modern techniques. Which is of course really interesting because this type of a PCB can easily be bought online for a couple of dollars. There's a lot of services and a lot of YouTubers advertising those services where you can order like 20 of them for just 20 bucks or so. But for a Venusian PCB, you would basically have to spend a few thousand dollars, if not more, just to make a tiny component to put in your radio. And so because of this, we're still really far from mass producing these devices, but we are only a few years, if not only a few months away, from being able to produce a fully functioning radio that would work inside one of these beautiful rovers that are probably going to end up on Venus in the next few years. And so that's kind of where we are right now. The radio is almost ready, the mission, even though theoretical, is definitely possible, and these rovers, if they become functioning and if they become a reality, will most likely take us to a completely new level of technology. Assuming, of course, it all goes fine. Which, of course, also means that we absolutely have to push for this mission to happen. This will definitely take us to a new level, and this will definitely help us develop new technology that would be otherwise impossible. And in the process, we might also discover a few things about Venus and our own planet that we didn't know before. With one of the bigger mysteries, of course, being why is it that Earth still has water and has conditions where we can survive easily, and Venus became this. Super hot, very high pressure, a lot of acidic rain, and basically something that we are not going to be able to survive on. Questions that we'll hopefully be able to answer in the next few years. But until this mission happens, well, we can only hope. Let's hope that NASA does not abandon this, that they have the funding and they have all of the talent needed to produce these beautiful rovers and to send them to Venus, and let's hope that all of this happens within the next few years. On that note, check out all of the relevant links in the description below, the article and all of the videos I've used are there as well. And in some of the future videos, we're going to be talking about the advances of this mission and where it's sort of headed in the next few months. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Consider supporting this channel on Patreon, or by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.